We've all heard the rumors. Nike hires Asian kids for $5 a pair, or that a $300 Yeezy costs just $15 to make, with Adidas making a 2,000% profit. Yeah, not quite. While it's true these companies don't have the best record when it comes to paying workers, sneaker production is a complex business involving several steps between production and retail, each adding to the overall cost of the shoe. Let's take a look at the journey of a typical $100 Nike shoe from scratch. Most shoes are mass-produced in Asian countries, such as China and Vietnam, due to cheap but skilled labor. Factory production, which includes cost of raw material and labor, is outsourced to third parties. This comes around to $22 a shoe. The package shoes then need to be transported via cargo ships to various distribution centers before reaching the final destination. Several logistical costs are added up along the way, and import duty is to be paid on arrival. Apart from this, companies get their shoes insured against accidents at sea, like the time 60,000 Nike sneakers were lost in a storm. So transportation, custom duty, insurance, and manufacturing total up to around $27. This is called the landed cost. But that doesn't paint the entire picture. Companies like Nike, Under Armour, and Adidas heavily promote their clothing lineups, investing billions of dollars in ads and endorsements every year. Apart from this, they run retail stores, pay employees, research new products, and of course, pay taxes. While it's difficult to precisely calculate the effect all these factors have on a single shoe, we can make good estimates using Nike's income statements and other publicly available information. According to Soul Review, they add up to around $18, bringing the total to $45. Still think that's a good margin? Well, there's another step before we're done. Most shoes aren't sold directly by the company, but via retail stores such as Foot Locker, which buy them for only half the retail price. So a $100 shoe will be sold to Foot Locker for just $50. Subtract all the earlier costs, and there you go. Nike makes a $5 profit on a $100 shoe. It's even lower for Adidas at $2. Not that impressive now, is it? Retailers taking a straight 50% might seem a lot, but breaking down their operating costs explains why. These companies do their own marketing, run their own stores, pay their own employees, and give discounts to beat the competition. I'll talk about the economics of a sale like Black Friday in a future video. Subscribe now or you'll end up over shopping. So an established retailer like Foot Locker makes about $6 off a $100 sneaker. Again, not very impressive, but it all changes with premium shoes. While they do have slightly higher production and endorsement costs, premium sneakers like Jordans or Yeezys sell for much higher prices. A pair of the new Yeezy Boost 700 will set you back $380. That is, if you can get your hands on one. Unlike normal shoes, these are released in limited quantities and get sold out instantly. This calculated approach allows the company to ensure high demand and create more hype around the brand. So much so that the sneaker reselling market is worth billions, with limited release models going for up to 10 times the original price. You can forget about discounts on one of these. Naturally, the returns for these brands are high. Premium merchandise plus in-store sales leaves a 46% margin for Nike, nine times that of a regular sneaker sold externally. Selling apparel online is another way to maximize profit. In Nike CEO's own words, it returns nearly twice as much revenue and significantly higher margins on each transaction. Adidas has begun shutting down physical shops in favor of its online stores as well. This shift to e-commerce can mark the beginning of cheaper shoes and clothing in general. The footwear industry is estimated to reach nearly $115 billion by 2022. And factors such as pressure to use eco-friendly raw material, improved workers' rights, or the push by companies to automate manufacturing will affect prices in the future. But like any generic premium brand, these $300 Yeezys are not getting cheaper. Unless the sneaker bubble bursts, of course. Enjoyed the video? Subscribe and leave a comment. By the way, if you'd like to help me make better content, fill out the survey in the description.